And this talk is going to be given by Gil Sembrano, who is a senior review officer here at CIRM. And uh, he's going to tell you about it, give you an overview of the CIRM application process from letter of intent to funded grant. Gil? Uh, thank you very much, John. Um, I want to spend maybe about 10 minutes or so providing a brief overview of the review process, including the application process. And I want to begin basically uh, by describing where the responsibility of review lies. Uh, Proposition 71 uh, assigns the um, uh, responsibility to what it calls the Scientific and Medical Research Funding Working Group, or the Grants Working Group, as we uh, all know it. Uh, the group is composed of 23 members, seven of which are uh, patient advocate members of our governing board. 15 or up to 15 are scientists who are external to California, and these are drawn from a, a larger pool currently of about 130 who uh, span expertise from basic uh, biology to clinical medicine, uh, regulatory experts, and representatives from both academia uh, and biotech industry. Um, it also includes, uh, as an ex officio member, the chair of the ICOC. Now this group conducts uh, both a scientific and programmatic review of application uh, and makes overall uh, funding recommendations that go to the board. It is the ICOC that makes the final decisions on funding and I'll describe that uh, in a little bit more detail shortly. Um, I want to um, go over a couple of things that I think are, are particularly important. Uh, one is conflicts of interest. Um, this is a, a topic we certainly pay a, a lot of attention to prior to initiating review. Uh, and conflicts of interest are considered for all reviewers, uh, all board members, as well as CIRM staff, and anybody who would be for any reason part participating in review. Uh, and we check for conflicts against all personnel and institutions that are named in each application as well as related business entities uh, of for-profit institutions that are presented within an application. Um, in addition, reviewers also disclose to CIRM their financial interests, which we then review and help uh, cross-check and confirm potential conflicts or identify additional conflicts should such arise. Uh, CIRM staff, as well as board members, uh, have to file uh, a California Form 700 of financial interest, so this is uh, state law and something that we all do, and this is the basis for declaring conflicts for staff and board members. Uh, conflicts that are recorded, um, um, and anyone with a conflict uh, can then not review, discuss, vote, uh, or take any action on an application with a conflict. Um, the other important aspect of review is that applicant information is confidential. Uh, the identity of the applicants and the research proposal are treated as confidential material. Uh, the project title, the public abstract, statement of benefit to California, and the total budget requested are items within the application that do become public as a result of presenting these items to our board and uh, presenting the uh, review summary uh, to our board and to the applicant. Um, if approved for funding by the ICOC, then in addition, the principal investigator name uh, as well as the institution are publicly available. Um, I will also note that applications are not available to reviewers that have a conflict of interest with those applications. And all participants in a review sign a non-disclosure and confidentiality agreement, uh, therefore agreeing not to discuss uh, or disclose any information related either to the application, its contents, or the review. Uh, and in addition, the reviewers also agreed to destroy any materials related to the application uh, and to the review. Now, let me just briefly go over the, the process of review, where it begins and where it ends. Um, once an uh, RFA is posted, uh, the first we hear from applicants is through the letter of intent. And the process follows 
one which is very similar to other funding agencies, including the NIH. Uh, the letter of intent for us serves a couple of purposes. One, to help us uh, determine for the applicant the likelihood of being eligible uh, to submit a full application, as well as giving us a general idea of the expertise needs that will be required to conduct an appropriate review. Um, we receive full applications usually five or six weeks after an LOI, and we take about two weeks to check uh, for conflicts of interest, uh, make sure that the applications conform to page limits, uh, that there aren't any additional appendices that are not permitted, and then uh, we make assignments to specific reviewers and allow and send them to reviewers. And uh, reviewers have approximately five to six weeks to conduct a review. Um, and that's before they come and join us in San Francisco for a meeting of the grants working group. Uh, now, the outcome of that grants working group review are recommendations that go to the board, and again, I will describe that in just a little bit more detail. Uh, one, of the thing, one of the other outputs of the grants working group meeting are review summaries that are put together by CIRM staff. During the meeting, CIRM staff uh, takes notes of discussion uh, and put together a review of the strengths and weaknesses that are highlighted regarding the application. Uh, this goes back both to the applicant and is provided to the board when they consider applications for uh, funding. Now, the time frame for this uh, is approximately seven months, uh, which is perhaps maybe two or three months uh, faster than the NIH. Um, and um, the, the, the process, I think, uh, overall is it becomes a challenge with more applications. So one of the things that we have been testing are other mechanisms to allow us to manage large numbers. Uh, reasonably, the Grants Working Group can probably review about 60 applications if they are of the basic biology variety. Other more complex applications require much more time. Uh, but uh, one of the things that we are trying is a pre-application process, that is, uh, instead of uh, submitting a, an LOI, the applicant would submit a pre-application which briefly describes the proposal uh, and provides an overall uh, presentation of their team, the feasibility, uh, and the general d design. Uh, the pre-apps are reviewed by external scientists as well as internal staff. Uh, and we try to find and identify those applications or proposals that are going to be the most competitive and the most responsive to the RFA. Uh, and it is, it is important to note that the project that is presented in the pre-app should be the same that then comes to us in the full application because these do undergo a rigorous review. Full applications then uh, are invited uh, and submitted and then the process is otherwise the same as I described before. Now the review meeting itself of the grants working group is conducted in two stages. As I mentioned before, there is a scientific assessment as well as a programmatic assessment. During the scientific review, which is the first portion of the meeting, a review chair of the grants working group leads the scientific members uh, to evaluate and score individual applications for the scientific merit based on specific criteria that are described in the RFA. We select up to 15 grants working group reviewers that have relevant expertise to the area that is, uh, pertains to the RFA. But in addition, we solicit the help of what we call specialist reviewers who do not score or vote but add expertise and participate in the review via phone. Uh, each of the applications that is considered is discussed, that is we do not triage applications at this stage, and each reviewer scores an application uh, unless they have a conflict. Now during the second stage of review, once all applications have been scored, uh, we undergo the programmatic review. The vice chair of the grants working group, uh, who is a patient advocate, leads the group through an assessment of the entire portfolio of applications, taking into consideration their overall rank, uh, the specific objectives of the RFA, and the mission of CIRM. And some of the considerations may be overall 
uh, risk-benefit assessment, uh, whether there are varied approaches that are considered in the portfolio, uh, that we are addressing perhaps varied diseases. And so an application might, for example, be increased in rank uh, despite having perhaps a lower score if there is a compelling programmatic reason to do so. Uh, so in some cases you may find that there are uh, applications that are recommended for funding but that are perhaps lower score or higher score than one that was not. Um, the grants working group recommendations essentially come in, in three flavors. There are three tiers, uh, recommended for funding, provisionally recommended for funding, or not recommended for funding. And so the grants working group during their programmatic review assigns these applications uh, to one of these tiers. Uh, along with its score and the summary of the review are then provided to the ICOC as the basis of their final decision. Uh, and then these decisions are made in public. The ICOC uh, meets uh, and uh, during this meeting, because it is in public, applicant names and institutions are not identified. Uh, the ICOC members with a conflict of interest do not participate in the discussion or voting uh, for funding of applications uh, and the ICOC will consider the recommendations brought by the grants working group. And uh, of course the ICOC may or may not agree with the recommendations. Uh, and so they can discuss for example overall budget in terms of how much they can or feel uh, comfortable uh, supporting. Uh, but they may also find other compelling programmatic reasons either to fund or not fund an application. But ultimately the final decision for funding is made uh, by the board.